Hello everyone. We are in the last two lectures of the lecture series of thermodynamics. Both the lectures, last two lectures, will be having only one topic, that is the Joule-Thomson effect. In the 36th lecture, we are going to discuss the experimental analysis part, and in the last one, that means 37th lecture, we are going to discuss the inversion temperature. What about the Joule-Thomson experiment? You have heard about the Joule's experiment, where an ideal gas was expanded against vacuum and no heat change, no temperature change was observed. And from there, from there you got a parameter, the Joule's coefficient. Here also, uh, some parameters are going to be obtained. Now let's see, what about the experimental setup? Here, a real gas is taken instead of an, an ideal gas, and the gas has been compressed from its initial pressure and volume P1 and P1 respectively but the temperature was T1 and the gas finally expands but it expands through a porous plug so it passes through a porous plug and then expansion takes place and its final pressure and volume becomes P2 and V2 V2 is greater than P1 while P2 is less than P1 so here the pressure is higher here the pressure is lower here the volume is lower, here the volume is greater. So the work of compression would be involved P1, V1, while the work of expansion would be involving P2 and V2. And for some real gases, they have observed some temperature drop during expansion. So this cooling effect is known as the Joule-Thomson effect. And the experiment is known as the Joule-Thomson experiment. And one more thing must be mentioned here that the body of the tool, that means the wall, was completely insulated. That means no heat was allowed to pass through. That means there had been no heat exchange with the system and the surrounding. So, Joule and Thomson have observed that when a real gas at a certain pressure expands adiabatically. Why adiabatically? Because the whole wall of the system is insulated. So it is adiabatically through a porous plug. This is a throttle or a porous plug or a fine hole into a region of low pressure. That means here P2 is less than P1. So it is passing to towards a lower pressure region. The gas cools down. So the T2 is less than T1. So this effect is known as the Joule-Thomson effect. Now we have to prove this mathematically. Why is that effect is isoenthalpic in nature? That means we have to prove dH equals to zero. In order to do that, we have to assume that the pressure, temperature, and volume of the real gas are entirely uh, are initially P1, T1, and V1 respectively. So initial pressure, temperature, and volume. Let us see the experimental setup here. Here, pressure, temperature, and volume P1, V1, T1, and final. It was initial and final was P2, V2 and T2. Okay. So, the final pressure, volume and temperature had been P2, V2 and T2. So, the gas expands in the right hand side while compressing taking place in the left hand side. So, the work due to compression should be what? It should be P1, V1 and the work due to expansion should be definitely minus P2 V2 because here the system is doing work some work and here some work is being done on the system. So the what is the overall work done? The overall work done W is equals to definitely their summation so minus P2 V2 plus P1 V1 and since the whole body is insulated no heat exchange is taking place so Q or heat transfer is zero. So according to the first law of thermodynamics here Q is 0 so D delta U that means change in internal energy is actually the work so work done is actually in lieu of the internal energy okay if internal energy decreases work is done by the system if internal energy increases work is done on the system okay that means if this one is plus that means increase so this one also plus so work is done on the system while if this one is negative then internal energy is decreasing so minus W means work is done by the system 
now delta u means the difference between the final in, uh, internal energy and the initial internal energy so delta u can be replaced by u2 minus u1 on the other hand we have the expression of w which is minus p2v2 plus p1v1 so we are writing here instead of w minus p2v2 plus p1v1 okay after rearrangement we get this expression u2 plus p2v2 minus u1 plus p1v1 and they are nothing but h2 and h1 so h2 equals to h1 that is h equals to constant that means dh or delta h equals to zero so the expansion takes place isoenthalpically since h is constant so it is isoenthalpic now derivation of the joule thompson coefficient which is denoted as mu jt okay so let's start with the expression of h as a function of pressure and temperature and this total derivative of h is dh equals to del h del dp dt plus del h del pt dp and we know that del h del dp is nothing but cp so it is cp dt plus del h del pt dp since this is an isoenthalpic process so look at this equation here there is dh in the left hand side so since it is isoenthalpic so the overall enthalpy change would be zero okay so the expression would have dh equals to zero so this two is zero okay okay one question might arise in your mind that enthalpy is not changing then how this value can exist here actually this is some partial property this is actually change in enthalpy with respect to pressure at constant temperature this parameter it may have some value and that value would be nullified by some value from here contributed from here and the overall enthalpy change would be zero this is the partial enthalpy change but the summation of these two terms are the overall enthalpy change so these two must have to be equal so let us equate them since they are equal so cp dt must be equal to minus del h del pt dp okay and when this dp is taken to the left hand side and since it is isoenthalpic we can write this expression instead of dt by dp we can write del t by del p at constant enthalpy and the right hand side is same minus del h by del p t thus we get equation one which has the expression of mu j t so what is mu j t mu j t has the expression del t del p h okay it means it is the temperature change with respect to pressure in the joule thompson experiment you are decreasing the pressure and there is some temperature drop so if there is cooling effect these two are directly proportional to each other that means this is having some positive value okay so this expression del t del p at constant enthalpy is called the joule thomson coefficient or in short it is denoted as mu j t and it has the expression from this after having solved this equation it has another expression it is minus 1 by cp del h by del p t okay so here the quantity del t del p h is known as the joule thompson coefficient and it is denoted by mu j t this is the isoenthalpic rate of change in temperature with respect to pressure now the cooling and heating effects will be explained here we know the fundamental equation h equals to u plus pv and let's differentiate both sides with respect to p at constant t then you get the result del h del pt so differentiation with respect to p at constant temperature here also differentiation of u with respect to p at constant temperature so del u del pt and here differentiation of pv with respect to p at constant temperature so it is del pv by del pt now let's recall the expression of mu jt in terms of cp and the expression is minus 1 by cp del h by del pt and this expression can be replaced by the right hand side of this relationship so the right hand side of this relationship is replacing this del h del pt expression so here it has been inserted in place of this one and this one is analyzed further it is del u del pt so it can be expanded like del u del pt into del b del pt because del b del b would cancel each other ultimately eventually it is actually del a del u by del pt okay so finally we get equation number two what is the expression of equation number two just multiply one by minus one by cp with both the terms then we get the expression minus one by cp into del u del pt del b del pt 
minus again 1 by Cp into this one. That means del Pb by del P at constant temperature. So this equation is very important. Equation number 2. Here, just see in this equation, this part. This part can be 0. No, according to Boyle's law, this part cannot be 0 because these two are inversely proportional to each other. This has some negative value. Okay. But this one, according to Joule's experiment, must be 0 according uh, for, for ideal gases. So, the first term is 0. On the other hand, PV is constant according to Boyle's law again. So, this part is also 0. So, mu JT for ideal gas must be 0. So, here we explain that del V del PT not equal to 0, but del U del BT equals to 0 and del PB by del PT is also equal to 0. So, it results in that the joule thomson coefficient is 0 from equation number 2. But for real gases, what happens? Mu JT is not 0. It is something different from 0. Okay. And here, this term, del U del VT, this is energy by volume. So, it has the dimension of pressure. Okay. And this is known as the internal pressure. And for one mole of a Van der Waals gas, it has the value A by V squared. And A by V squared is a positive quantity. So, we get that del U by del VT is a positive quantity. Now, del V by del PT, it is definitely a negative quantity because V and P are inversely proportional to each other. So, we are mentioning it here according to the Boyle's law. Okay. So, if we look back to the equation number 2, then it is found that this one is positive while this one is negative and here is one negative sign. So, overall this is a positive quantity. Now move to the second term. Okay. So, the first term of equation 2 has to be always positive. So, here we are rewriting the equation number 2. Okay. And the first term, uh, it has two terms, the first one being always positive. It has been, uh, uh, it has been explained why it is positive. Now about this one. Okay. So, it is minus 1 by Cp into this differentiation. So, if this one is positive, then overall term is negative. And if this one is negative, then overall term is positive. Not only that, if this one is always positive. Okay. Now, if the overall term is positive, then mu jt is positive. So, cooling effect is always obser observed. But when del Pb by del P is positive, then the second term becomes negative. And this second term, if it is greater than the first term, then the overall mu jt has attained a negative value. And if mu jt is negative, then heating effect would occur. And heat heating effect occurs in so many conditions. At high pressure, heating effect occurs. At high temperature, heating effect occurs. Okay. So, let's analyze them. So, the second term, which has the factor del Pb by del Pt, which is positive for hydrogen and helium, definitely. They are always positive for hydrogen and helium. And also, not only that, this, this, the magnitude of this first term is always less than this one, because this is a very small quantity. Okay. Because this is equal to A by V square. A is a small constant and it is square of V. So, dividing you by some large uh, quantity. So, it is, it is resulting in a very small value. So, this is always negative. This is always less than the second one. Okay. So, the first term, magnitude of the first term is less than that of the second term because the first term contains the parameter del u del v t which is actually a by v square which is too small. Thus, the magnitude of the second term of equation 2 exceeds the first term resulting in mu jt equals to negative. Mu jt equals to negative means heating effect will be observed and it does so happen in case of hydrogen and helium. Therefore, the negative value of mu jt that means joule thomson coefficient that is mu jt is negative means this one is negative. So, this one is negative means if pressure, pressure and temperature are inversely proportional. So, for hydrogen and helium, if it is decrease in pressure, then there will be increase in temperature. Okay. So, if this one explains that the temperature would increase with decrease in pressure resulting in heating effect. Now, let us explain the cooling effect of the other real gases. So, on the other hand, the second term of equation 2 is negative for other gases. Okay. 
at lower temperature and lower pressure the condition is the gas has to be at lower temperature and lower pressure value okay in that condition mu jt would be positive and cooling effect would be observed and what about at high pressure if the pressure is increased then we have to explain this on the basis of the amagars curve let's recall the amagars curve here you see here so this slope is positive for hydrogen and helium okay but for other gases it decreases then passes through a minimum and then increases okay so for hydrogen and helium the slope that means del pv by del p t is always positive look here temperature is kept constant that is why the t is suffixed here on the other hand the for other gases pv is initially pv initially decreases passes through a minimum and then increases at high pressure range that means if up to this it is low pressure but up to uh, from this to the right hand side we are entering a high pressure zone so here in such areas the pressure is very high and the slope definitely it is visible to be having a positive value okay so the heating effect takes place the heating effect takes place after passing through the minima because at a certain pressure after reaching the minima the magnitude of the second term exceeds that of the first term that means when it is passing through the minima then heating effect doesn't occur because when it is passing through minima then this is this is having zero value now if we look back to equation number two okay this is the equation number in equation number two this term is positive but this term zero at the minima so still we are having some positive value so cooling effect still takes place then pv is having pv by p is having a positive value that means it is, it is becoming positive so now something is getting deducted from this parameter and then when it, their magnitude are same then no heating and cooling takes place that temperature uh, uh, actually at which temperature it takes place that is called inversion temperature but here we are not going to discuss that after having passed through the minima cooling effect still continues but when the magnitude of this parameter would become greater than this one then the overall parameter would have a negative value resulting in heating effect okay so we are moving to the amagars curve here again so suppose this one suppose we have taken carbon monoxide as for example so here at this pressure cooling effect still taking place at this pressure also cooling effect may take place but at some higher pressure when the magnitude of the second term exceeds the magnitude of the first term then the overall value of the right hand side of equation number two becomes negative and at that time from such area the heating effect would occur or would start to happen so pv initially decreases passes through minimum i as i have read this so the heating effect takes place after passing through a minimum because at a certain pressure after reaching the minima the magnitude of the second term exceeds that of the first term afterwards mu jt is negative that is what is being said here so mu jt has to be negative okay and heating effect would be observed for other gases also now we have said that at low pressure and low temperature cooling effect takes place so we have already discussed that at high pressure how heating effect takes place now let us see what about the uh, effect at high temperature joule thomson effect at high temperature okay this is the amagars curve for the same gas as for example we have taken here nitrogen okay so at 200 kelvin that means it is um, uh, less than 0 degree celsius it is first decreasing and then goes a long way then reaches the minima then increases okay at a little higher temperature look this well this well has gone little upper position that means the minima the value of minima has shifted to some upper position so at much uh, higher uh, a much lower pressure the pv versus p curve is having a positive slope and at much higher temperature say for example 1000 kelvin it has no minima the minima is vanished okay 
So in the Amagat curve plotting, if any particular gas, say here as for example nitrogen is selected and PV versus P is plotted at different temperatures, then it will be observed that at a certain high temperature, the curve is not showing any minima with a positive slope throughout. Look here, it is having a positive slope throughout. There is no minima. It is not at all decreasing at any place. Okay, so it is resulting in the heating effect because the second term becomes negative and exceeds the first term to make mu jt negative. So the temperature at which there is neither heating nor cooling. So there must be some temperature where neither heating effect nor cooling effect would be observed. That temperature is called the inversion temperature Ti and this Ti is the topic of discussion of our next lecture. Okay, so that's all for this experimental part analysis. Thank you. Have a nice day.